We will be able to manufacture next generation vaccines in years to come to deal with either uh, outbreaks, uh, reoccurrences, or some new variants, do you feel? And will we be able to make enough supply to forever keep this at a low level? Or because it, it won't be new to us then, and we, we've done it before, and, and, and we probably have the technology to to uh, upgrade the software, if you will, of, of the vaccine. But will we ever get caught totally flat-footed and, and have to start from scratch in terms of production of vaccine? Or can, do you think we can handle it every year? Well, with respect to the coronavirus, I think that the mRNA platform turned out to be an optimal platform. And updating the vaccines using that platform is pretty much plug and play. It's not like manufacturing a new flu vaccine where you have to get the flu strain to grow in cell cultures and sometimes you can run into problems with that. You should be able to tweak the mRNA sequence, tweak the protein and effectively fit it into the existing manufacturing platforms, both at Pfizer and Moderna. And both companies have built out substantial manufacturing platforms at this point that they continue to invest in. You know, there's no guarantee that the next pandemic that might be with some novel strain of bird flu or something unexpected um, is going to be amenable to an mRNA vaccine. We may need a different platform to deal with a different kind of virus. This mRNA platform turned out to be very suitable to a coronavirus. It could be that it's, there's reasons why it's so well adapted to a coronavirus and it's not going to be as well adapted to a strain of bird flu. We just don't know. So that's why I think it behooves us to invest in um, complementary platforms, protein-based vaccines, the viral vector vaccines that you see J&J working on, and the old-style inactivated virus vaccines. I think if we're taking a strategic approach and trying to place a lot of chips to guard against the next pandemic, we want to have capabilities to scale any one of those platforms. I wonder whether the... It'd be nice to have a Tamiflu, but I wonder whether the mechanism that we're targeting there in, in terms of viral replication, is that... Would you see mutations around that? Would, would new strains, if we do develop a, a Tamiflu-like, I mean, that would be fantastic, would it not? Where you can basically, uh, you know, cut the, the lethality of the virus off right at the knees, right at the beginning, if you catch it early enough. Would that, would mutations get around that as well in future strains? Potentially, we see mutations to Tamiflu, but it's less likely um, if you can target a conserved part of viral replication. And there's a lot of drugs targeting um, core aspects of how this virus replicates, RNA polymerase. I think we'll get one. I think we'll get a small molecule inhibitor of viral replication. You know, with those drugs, there's always concerns about off-target effects. You're trying to target the virus and not have any off-target effects in the human body. So that's usually what, what holds up that kind of drug development, but I think we'll be able to do this. There's three drugs in late stage development right now. Any one of them could work. Uh, and they'll all yeah. turn over data cards before the fall. So it's possible that we will have a small molecule inhibitor of viral replication for the fall, which yeah. no one's baking into any assumptions, which would be a real game changer. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.